In this video, I will talk about things that you have to arrange before you can travel to Philippines. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Magandang araw sa iyong lahat. Welcome po sa aking channel. I know it's been a while that I uh, made my last video. Uh, I went live last time, but it's also uh, more than one month ago. Now, uh, for people that watched my live, uh, I mentioned that I have some problems uh, with my eye and that I was uh, having a blurry vision. Now, in the meanwhile, I already had an operation on my eye. That's why it uh, took me a while before I could make a new video. Uh, also, this video maybe looks different, um, but it's because I'm not able to work on a computer yet with my eye. So my wife edited this video and she made it in her program because she's used to it. So maybe this video uh, will look a little bit different, but that's because I didn't my, edit my video myself. Now, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about the procedure to go to Philippines for this moment uh, because I can see really a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions for uh, the papers that you need to travel because yeah Philippines is open now but you still need some paperwork to do before you can travel. Now uh, one of the things that is the most question now there are two things to be correct. Um, the first thing is people are asking about the PCR test. They are worried because the PCR test needs to be a test that is uh, done 48 hours instead of 72 hours. A lot of countries are using 72 hours, but Philippines is 48 hours. Now the 48 hours starts counting from the moment that you did your swab test. So even if it's taking another 12 hours before you get the result, you already lose the 12 hours from your 48 hours. So that's something you have to uh, be aware of, that you don't put your test too close to your departure because you have to count also the time that you need to get your result. Now if it's a, a busy moment and a lot of people do the PCR test, it can take uh, 24 hours before you get your result. So you really have to measure it precisely. Um, and the 48 hours is for the moment that you check in. A lot of people are afraid that uh, 48 hours is still when you arrive in Philippines. Now, I did some double checking and I found some websites. It's the moment that you check in that you're having your first flight. Um, also, maybe not the check-in, but like the departure time. But mostly it's uh, around three hours uh, difference. So you have to make sure that uh, the 48 hours is in within that uh, time. Now, I found that on the official website from Foreign Affairs about uh, traveling to other countries. So you just have to pay attention that the 48 hours is for the moment that your departure uh, is going here in Belgium, not the moment that you arrive in Philippines. Because yeah, the travel to Philippines, it depends on your uh, transit time that you, you have to count extra, but mostly it's around 25 hours, uh, 20, 25 hours. So there is a really, really small chance that you will make it within the 48 hours after you did the test. The thing that you can do, if you want to really be sure, you can always do a PCR test in the airport itself. Just outside where you have to be for your departure, there is like a special location where you can get your PCR test. Now, I will see if I can put a link down in the description for that. Um, but they are also having some uh, schedules. For example, if you have your PCR test between uh, 3.30 a.m. and 6 a.m. you get your result before 11 a.m. so uh, that's quite quick that you that you can uh, have it there of course it's not for free I found prices for 135 euro for one PCR test so if you're going with two or like uh, with the whole family that can be quite expensive but 
uh, they guarantee you that when you have it like early in the morning you have your result before 11 a.m so that's a quite quite nice alternative if you uh, are afraid about that now the second thing that uh, people are asking is about the thirty-five thousand um, dollars kind of is insurance that you need the travel insurance now this is especially for the people that are here in belgium uh, because yeah i don't know for other countries you can find a lot of uh, companies that are offering it online but um, there are some companies here in belgium the insurance companies for example and this is not a sponsored video but uh, for example i have uh, my travel insurance with kbc uh, that's a Belgian bank for people that are watching it from outside of Belgium and they have a travel insurance now you can have a travel insurance just for one travel or you can have a travel insurance for the whole year now I have an insurance that is for the whole year even I go for a weekend somewhere inside of Belgium it's also insured if something happens there the people uh, I asked them if it's also covered with COVID now and they changed their uh, policy and it's also now covered for COVID and for the standard that's what they told me for the standard uh, package you are insured for medical support outside of Belgium for 500,000 euro now I don't know exactly how many uh, dollar it will be but it's a lot more than 35,000 dollars now for me I already have it uh, many years I have it before 2017, before I traveled to the Philippines, that I already had this. And I remember that I uh, took the option to have a higher uh, coverage and they call it the VIP. And even for our case, our file, we are covered for 1 million euro uh, for medical support outside of, uh, of Belgium. So for us, that's no problem. I called to the agency and they are uh, willing to provide a document uh, where everything is marked in. So if you are having that, they will provide you with the documents that you need to travel. Now, the most important, uh, how much does it cost? Uh, for my insurance with a VIP, I'm paying, I think it was 72 euro for two people for the whole year. So that's really not a lot. Uh, to, to have that insurance and it's also covering even here inside of Belgium. If I can see people are advising you have AXA and everything like that and you can arrange everything online but the prices that I see they are never uh, on the same price that, uh, that I saw. I can see prices from 90 euro and, and 100 plus. I'm, I'm only having 72 and it's for the whole year. Now, I don't know how much it is if you're only taking that insurance for one way, one time that you travel to the Philippines. Um, if I remember, but yeah, it's already five years ago and it was before COVID. Uh, I remember that it was like maybe 10 or, or 20 euro difference. That's why I took for the whole year because it was like just, just peanuts extra to have that, uh, that whole cover. So uh, people, uh, you can just find it online maybe or otherwise you just uh, contact uh, the, the KBC to have uh, more information about that insurance. It's just uh, the travel insurance. Now quickly about other things that you need. Of course, uh, you need to have your uh, vaccination certificate that you're fully vaccinated. Otherwise, it's not possible to travel to the, to the Philippines. And also you need to arrange a one health pass. Now that's also really important. I saw some people that already traveled to Philippines in the last uh, couple of weeks and they uh, asked a lot about that document. Now there is a website where you can apply for that. Now the things, yeah, I'm not able to, uh, to sit on the computer and to check. Uh, but uh, the, the quick things that I, uh, that I heard about it is that it goes in two stages. First stage is that you have to arrange everything uh, and apply everything online on, on the website. Uh, but you can only do it be with three days before your travel or something. So it's not like that you can arrange it already one month in advance. Um, and then the last step that you have to do is like a kind of confirmation that you're on the airport. Uh, and you will get a QR code then and you need that to check in. Now for us, 
we didn't travel yet. Uh, normally we, we were traveling uh, uh, really, really soon, but with my eye, I'm not allowed to travel for the moment. I'm not allowed to fly. Uh, so let's hope that uh, that is healed quickly so we can travel. Um, but the moment that we will travel and we need all the documents, I will uh, apply again in the in the video, maybe with like uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, plan that you can just follow. Uh, but that uh, is one of the most important documents that you need uh, because they are asking a, a lot about it. There are people that saying I even have to show it like almost 10 times. So that's a really important one. And then um, I don't know what it is if you're already married with a Filipina, um, but if you're going there in the Philippines, you have to have like your return flight and the return flight cannot be longer than 30 days. Now um, they are talking about that uh, you cannot extend your visa on arrival in, in Philippines. Now there is a lot of uh, talking around uh, and yeah, I don't have the correct information for the, for the moment. But I don't know how it is when you're already married with the Filipina and you're traveling together. Because normally when we arrive there we get a one year stamp, a Balik Bayan stamp in our passport. So I don't know how it is about uh, if you're traveling longer than one month. Maybe if you, if you have like that better that you uh, uh, call to the consul or you are calling to the to the embassy maybe they will you give you like a kind of visa in advance already that you don't have uh, that problem in in the airport but uh, that's something to to be mentioned also that uh, on the belgium website from the foreigner affair they are saying that you need to have a return flight within the 30 days from your departure now I hope that you think that this video was informative. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't subscribe yet, don't forget to click the red button down the video. Also don't forget to ring the notification bell as well. Um, it's worth clicking on that because uh, once my eye is healed, we are traveling to Philippines and we will make a vlog about our traveling. So you can uh, follow our course that we have to do. Um, with the papers, on the airport, on our travel. So it's worth uh, just subscribing uh, to follow our trip. I hope it will be quick. Now, for now, I'm saying thank you for watching. I hope you think it was informative. Share it to everybody uh, because this is the latest information that I found online. Uh, and this video, I'm just recording it before it's going online. It's not like it's already two or three weeks old. So. Thank you for watching, hope to see you soon, pa'alam, tot ziens, and if you're traveling, have a nice and a safe flight.